You might notice the lighting is a little bit different on this episode. That's because I'm filming it during the day. Welcome to The Final Wager. I'm Keith Williams. Watched Tuesday's episode a little bit too late to record a video, so here I am in the daytime. Light streaming through the blinds. I don't have to use the overhead light that I hate so much. And uh, before I watched Final last night, I wrote down what I hoped each player would do. Steve did exactly that. Terry Loft off left off $200, and Alex, for some reason, went for $6,500, which made absolutely no sense, because if Steve gets it wrong with his bare minimum lockout wager, he's still going to have more than Alex has going in. Might as well wager everything. At least it only cost her $1,000. I kind of wanted to give her a gray, because why would you do that? But there was a possibility of her winning if she was the only one to get the final right, but they all got it right, so it didn't really matter in the end. Terry's very happy for the extra grand. And uh, I got a new champion. I want to talk on this episode about my love for the series Archer. It's a cartoon going on its seventh season. You might know from hearing about Brad Rutter and other players, they love The Simpsons because there's so much trivia you can unpack from that show. And the same is true from Archer. Archer does a lot of weird allusions to obscure things, and it turns out, on no fewer than four clues, that show helped me out tonight, to some extent. So there was that uh, Water Buffalo Lodge clue, which mentioned Barney, so I guess jumping to Fred isn't too hard, but there's an episode where Archer sees a bunch of guys in big furry hats. Hey, check it out, friend Barney. We're at the Water Buffalo Lodge. Now, if you have to get it the other way around, if you're given Fred and Barney are members of this group, like they did on Learned League this past season, that's very helpful. There was a question about some sort of food item named after some guy, Key, I think his name was, or K, or, you know, it's probably Key. And it was very easy for me to jump to K rations because... Oh, uh, what the... What in the holy hell are you doing now? Ugh, wondering why this is called a D-ration. Ought to call it a Y-ration, as in, hey, this tastes like catch. Now we get into the good stuff. That $2,000 clue about dock workers, I knew because of a really strange line in Archer that made me go look up what Stevedore meant. Lana, I need a woman's touch. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I'm sorry, Lana. I said a woman, not a stevedore who lost his hand in a stevedoring accident and then got a hand transplant from an actual bear. And finally, well, Final Jeopardy. I might have gotten Final Jeopardy, but hearing Parable and then remembering this. I'm telling you to do it. And I'm telling you that I didn't sign up for Animal Farm in space. Wait, there are animals? What? No. Animal farm? How do you not get that? Cyril, I know what an animal farm is. Not an animal farm. Then maybe we can, I don't know, stampede a flock of goats down the hall. Animal farm is a book. No, it isn't, Lana. It's an allegorical novella about Stalinism by George Orwell. And spoiler alert, it sucks! Although I was talking about an actual animal farm. So, never mind. Made it really easy to get to the correct response. There's a lot of talk on social media and on clickbaity websites about how Terry's an idiot because he said Auburn Crimson Tide instead of Alabama. Who cares? As Kristen Sawsville said a long time ago, and I always keep going back to this, put up or shut up, go try out. The tryout is in a few weeks. Go to Jeopardy.com and register for the online test. Put your money where your mouth is, or I guess live your simple lives without bothering other people, please. I'll leave you with one final Archer reference, one of my favorites. Here it is. Cyril, can we spare another five pounds of cocaine? Mallory! 2.27 kilograms, then. Who are you, Thomas Corwin Mendenhall? Right. Thomas Corwin Mendenhall was a scientist from the late 19th century, and he was really in favor 
of the United States switching from the imperial system to the metric system. Of course, we still use feet and miles and pounds and things like that. But something that often, well, not often, but sometimes shows up on the lower levels on the Jeopardy board is the Mendenhall Glacier just outside of Juneau, Alaska. So if that shows up in the next few months, especially if you're going on the show and it comes up in your game, you owe me some money. So go watch Archer. Yeah, it's a little lewd, but Simpsons are too, I guess. There's more swearing in Archer because it's on FX. But definitely worth it if you like spy stuff or stuff about uh, human resources. There's a lot of that. Or just really funny, witty television. Anyway, that's enough out of me. And uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow to keep this carousel turning right here on the final wager.